Hello, Miami. You're watching 305 Sports Now, your home podcast and channel for all things Miami sports related. I am Will. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. Hey, what's up, everybody? Good afternoon. Thank you so much for watching and listening to 305 Sports. Now, once again, I am your host, Will. And I'm a happy guy, and I'm going to be talking up today. I'm going to be talking up today the Miami Hurricanes defensive line. I did that last week with my boys over at the U Herd, over with Joey and Polk. And I want to continue talking about the Miami Hurricanes defensive line because I am extremely excited at what this group is going to be bringing to the table. Not just the veteran guys that have been on this team for a while now, but also the guys that are newcomers, whether it's the transfer portal or whether it's also in recruiting as well Simeon Barrow okay the big defensive tackle out of Michigan State that was a great get for the Canes especially after losing Gerald Harrison Hunt okay that was a great get for the Canes that guy is going to pretty much be a nice rotational player and I'm only saying that because Lance Gidry likes to rotate his D tackles okay likes to rotate his defensive lineman not because he's not gonna get a lot of snaps I do think he will get a lot of snaps I do think he's an upgrade is Simeon Barrow uh, but, I, I mean, he's going to be coming in and out, I do believe, as well. So, Simeon Barrow coming in here. CJ Clark coming in here as well from North Carolina uh, from North Carolina State. And then, of course, you get Marley Cook from Middle Tennessee as well. I know there's a little knock on him about missing tackles. But he's a big guy and have a lot of confidence that Joe Salavea and Jason Taylor will coach him up. So, I'm really excited about that. Now, I also want to talk about a couple vets on this team. Ahmad Moten. Right? Ahmad Moten, a big guy. Right? Had a... Had a tip ball, the Boston College game, that forced an interception by Marcellus Pulliam. Because, oh, no way, he had the interception. I'm sorry, in general. So I'm really excited about seeing Ahmad Moda really step up. I've heard also a lot of good things about Anthony Campbell in practice as well. So I'm excited to see how those guys will fit into the rotation. And I will say this, though, with LT3 being gone, with Hunt being gone right as well, it's time for those guys to step up. And I think they will. I do think that being the second year of Gidry Systems, our boys will really step up and wreck havoc. Okay, we'll wreck some havoc. And everybody's running game. And also uh, when it comes to the quarterbacks and the line of scrimmage. Okay, so I'm really excited about that. I'm also excited about our young guys as well. Okay, I'm excited to see, of course, I want to see Justin Scott. Okay, I want to see Artavis Jones as well. Okay, I'm really excited to see them as well. So I'm really excited to see that young man out of uh, out of Columbus as well. I'm really excited to see what the Miami Hurricanes D-line is going to do. I'm really excited to see how much damage they're going to commit right, to opposing teams. The interior tackle position is rock solid. I do think we have good enough guys to pretty much be competitive and make life a lot easier for what is a, we don't know what's going to be a Miami Hurricane secondary. Okay, as well. So I'm really excited about that. Justin Scott and Artavis Jones are probably not going to get as much run as, of course, Simeon Barrow, Marley Cook, and CJ Clark. Because, you know, the, the the bodies of college football players is very different than what they dealt with in high school. I do think they will get some playing time, but I do think they won't. it won't be like a plug-in in. Here you go, game one type of deal. I think Justin Scott and Artavis Jones are going to have to wait a little bit and get in season shape and then start to contribute. If Justin Scott and Jones were able to come in here uh, during spring ball and so on, that might be a different case. But... It's you know they have to catch up with the playbook and the speed of college football and also the the body types of the individuals that they'll be facing this season, especially on August thirty first at the Swamp three thirty ABC Canes versus Gators. I'm excited to see what product on defense the Canes and of course on offense on defense are going to be putting up there and so on and how they're going to make Ram Mertz's life a living nightmare. Okay, now I'm not just done talking about the interior line. I want to talk about the edge rushers. That is where Miami is absolutely stacked. And in a college football that has that is full-blown spread, past happy teams in general, it is fantastic to know that the Miami Hurricanes, for starters, have Jason Taylor coaching DNs. That's absolutely sick. Okay. But also have 
pretty much probably the best defensive end group in the entire ACC. Ruben Bain should have had 10 sacks last year. Got six and a half sacks this year as well. Then you have incoming freshman Marquise Lightfoot. Okay. You have incoming freshman Booker Pickett Jr. Right. As well. Then you have, you know, Elijah Austin over from Marshall, one of the top graded edge rushers coming into the transfer portal as well. Sorry, my voice is still bad, guys, but I want to push through because I want to talk some Kings football. All right. Elijah Austin is right as well. Okay. Malik Bryant. <clears throat> Malik Bryant. From linebacker to edge rusher, they say he's doing very well as an edge rusher. And when he was in college, he was one hell of a blitzing linebacker. Six foot two, 230 pounds coming in with speed and power. Ooh. That defensive line group is going to be sick, man. It's going to be absolutely sick. He Mesidor, who can play the interior and play the outside. Coming in as well. And I do think we'll, we'll use some linebackers as well in blitzing packages off the edge and so on. Like, for example, um, Cam Pruitt, Cam Bobby Pruitt as well. That he will, you will see him get some run as kind of like a hybrid of a linebacker and defensive end. I think you will see that as well. Okay, so the defensive line is absolutely stacked. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited about our line and, I, and I'm talking about this is because our secondary is considered the weakest link on defense. Not because we have bad players, just a lack of depth. The defensive line has its depth, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because guys like Barrow, Ruben Bain, Mesidor as well, Booker Pickett, Cole McCarthy, let's not forget him. Cole McCarthy is an absolute stud as well. Defensive player of the year in Alabama. Beast. Okay. Reminds me a lot about J.J. Watt as well. Absolutely sick player. Miami's good at the D-line position and the edge rusher position. We'll see what happens, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for me. Short and straight to the point. All right. If you like what you heard, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Five Sports Now. Once again, everybody stay safe. God bless you soon. Go Canes. And I'll be taking some, some tea for this one. Okay, guys? God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Take care.